What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 52 of On Shape, our last, I believe our last, unless I find something noteworthy to throw in with gears, um, a rack and pinion system. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take one of the gears we've already made. I'm going to do the 10 tooth gear just because um, I'm sick and tired of seeing that 20 tooth gear and doing stuff with it. I think it's had too much attention. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a rack and pinion system using the 10 tooth gear and uh, the same tooth profile that we have before. For my, I would call it, uh, inexpertise or my lack of being able to figure it out, I could not quite figure out a way to system to do it without a slide in the back. So what we need to do is we need to create um, our slide here and then also something to sit on top of that slide. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna go back though, and I need to go into my gears. Now in my gear profile, my very first sketch, the one that we mentioned from day one. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and just bring that back on up. This one in the profile that which we based everything off of, we're going to double click and then copy this value. Okay, this number, really important. And then what we also know is that this distance is the same as that, as that, it's an equal equilateral triangle. When I then go to start to build something, it's all based on that profile. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and just get out all this mess and we're gonna create a new part studio. And let's go ahead and on this first sketch right here, we're just gonna make a rectangle. Doesn't matter what that is, I'm hit R for rectangle. You can go crazy on your width, you can go crazy on your height. I'm gonna do an eight inch by half inch block. Okay, zoom in here on this left side. What we're gonna do then is I'm going to draw a full triangle. Now notice there I redrew this line down here. And that's because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna dimension that line. And so we have a hard time getting to it sometimes. So what I found out to be helpful is just to delete that line, get it out of your way. We're gonna paste that value in there and then let's redraw that line back. If you're having a hard time getting in your way, just delete it, put it back in, okay. What we're gonna do is since you know this is an equilateral triangle, we'll hit the equal constraint and we'll make all three sides of this triangle equal. Okay, looking good. What we need to do now is to go ahead and take our uh, next constraint, or sorry, next piece, and we're going to uh, repeat this geometry down using a linear pattern. And so, depending on which one you use last, it could be uh, either this linear circular transform. So it's a little bit tricky to find sometimes. So under that drop down menu, click linear pattern, and we're going to repeat this geometry as many times as you want. So I'm gonna repeat it 15 times. Hit enter, okay. The distance between each gear or each tooth of your gear is going to be the distance of that triangle. So I'm going to actually just paste that value in again. Okay. Now you're welcome to make this as long as you want. It looks like I can squeeze a couple extra teeth in there. Looks good. Now we know we've done this right if uh, all of our profiles are still grayed out. What do we do with this little piece on the end? Well, what I've done typically now is I just draw a straight line out, and I just trim it out. We don't need it, it's a little extra hangover. Just delete it. Oh, delete one too many lines, there we go. Okay, looks good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and extrude that whole sketch. The distance of an inch, because that's the thickness of my gear. Hit the green check mark, and I'm gonna go to this bottom side again, and I'm going to actually extrude this bottom piece as a new. And what that does for me is it creates that backing for that, for the uh, rack and pinion system to slide on. 
The depth though can be something ridiculously small. So I'm gonna do 0 0.05. Now let's just do five hundredths of an inch. Okay, hit the green check mark and we're good. We're good to go. We've now officially made our slide. So let's go ahead and create a new assembly. Okay, we're gonna insert. We're gonna find that part studio we were in. Let's take both parts in there and find our 10 tooth gear, bring in one of those and an axle. Hit the green check mark and we're looking good. Okay, first thing I do always should do is take one piece that I want and fix it. Let's ground it, it's not gonna move. Right click and we're gonna fix this axle. So everything we do is based upon and built on that axle. Next we're gonna do is do a revolute mate. This is gonna revolute around this. Hit the check mark. And the next thing we're gonna have is I'm going to use the slider and we're going to have this slider is going to slide along this one right here. Okay. Hit the plus sign. Ah, that's not the direction I want. And so what I found myself doing a lot is just forgetting how I work through slider constraints. Okay, click on the face you want. You're gonna push through and slide through that face. So if we choose a face like this, you expect your motion to be through the face on the slider. All right, let me know this look at the camera and do that. So expect your motion to be through the face of the slider. So what I'm gonna do then is just take those away, drag them away, and the bottom edge here is gonna slide past this front edge right here. Hit the play symbol, and there we go, we're cooking with grease. Already looking great. Okay, last thing we're gonna need is we're going to need a fastened constraint, or fastened mate. So let's go ahead and take our slide out of here, and let's get our plate in the position it needs to be. So what we know is that this front face, let's go back here, fastened, that the front of this face is going to match with the front of that. We're going to rotate this a couple times. Oh, I selected on the wrong face, didn't I? There we go. Let's try it again. We're going to do this front face. There we go. It's going to be made to this front face. Boom. There we go. Cooking with grease now. All we need to do now is make our offset. Now our offset's going to be in a direction. If I zoom in here, I can see that the y action, y axis is still up and down. So let's try that out. Let's do one inch, negative one inch probably. But it's not quite working. Let's try that out. Let's try negative one inch there. Try negative one inch there. Okay. Let's try that again. Something's been going a little bit off with my system, and I don't quite know why. There we go. Let's just go into the green check mark on that, and then let's fix our fast, and let's edit it in there. We're gonna do an offset in the y direction, negative one, there we go. Sorry guys, what I found out is that actually my GPU and my computer um, is not it's, it's shot. So sometimes when I find myself trying to do stuff, um, it's not rendering the way I expect it to, and uh, my computer's lagging quite a bit with Onshape recently. So bear with me. I'm trying to get a new rig set up, but I digress. Okay, negative 1.5. And is that going to be big enough for my slide to fit in? I don't know. Let's see. I'm just going to get the green check mark all done. Okay, whoo, hot doggy. Man, we are almost there. It's about as close as you can get. Well, let's just go back here, reset this to make it negative 1.625, add an eighth of an inch to it, and that's too much. Man, almost there. 
All right, negative 1.575. Okay, there we go. I'm going to say that's close enough. Horseshoes and hand grenades. Rack and pinion system. So rack and pinion system, we need to do it between a revolute and a slide constraint because that's what a rack and pinion system is. And you take your rotational motion and you convert it into linear motion. So we're going to do is we're going to take our rotational revolute and turn that into our slide. Now, what about our distance per revolution? And I've got a little bit of a tricky kind of setup for this. You're like, well, I don't know. Well, what I do know is we have 10 teeth, right? And I do know with our 10 teeth, we do know that the distance of a tooth is going to be whatever that value is we copied earlier. So let's paste it in there. And it's going to be times 10, though. So what we're going to do is I'm going to actually just take this decimal place and move it over one. Click play. All right, let's see what that does for me now. All right, we see that our teeth aren't lined up or they're mashing through. So let's double click in here, reverse direction. Okay, we're looking really good. Okay, we see that there's a direct overlap right now. So I'm going to do is find a spot where that direct overlap looks like it's at its worst. And let's rotate it. So I'm going to go back down here to my Revolute, right click, edit one of these mates and move them eight degrees, nine degrees, 10 degrees, 12, too much, 15, 18. There we go. Looks pretty good to me. All right, so we got the check mark. Things are moving a little bit better. I think, however, I can come in and cheat that distance just a little bit more. Actually, I don't know. Yeah, we can. We got a little bit of a gap in here. So what's this size right here? Looks like this distance is 0 0.015. So let's add that to our distance here. All right, 1.5. What's that going to put me at? That's negative 1.59. Oh, I should have subtracted it. Duh, we want to move it up. All right, negative 1.560. Okay. And there we go, folks. I think that's probably going to be the best that I'm going to get for this rack and pinion system for the gears that we have right now. Alrighty guys, there we go. We've made our rack and pinion system. We've made adjustments to it to make it a little bit more realistic of what we need. And that's it. We're done. Okay guys, if you want to, you can throw in the limits of the constraints. That way the slide's not kicked out one way or the other too far. Um, but I'll leave that up for you. These videos have been tons of fun. If there's anything that you need, uh, specifically a video to help on, let me know. I'd love to reach out. You guys are awesome. Stay awesome. If these videos have been helpful, please like and subscribe. If your teacher's making you watch these, I apologize. Uh, it just is what it is. All right. Take care. Have a good day.